Thank you. It's war. War. what I am aiming at. And I hope that this journey may open the way to get it. secured from the French and Czechoslovak governments all the demands which you yourself proposed. I have gone further. I have now agreed that without any question of a plebiscite, the Sudeten territory shall be ceded to Germany. What more do you want? The situation has changed. I have made a new timetable and it cannot be altered. I have made a new timetable and it cannot be altered. Timetable? For what? Sie kommen zu spät. In zwei Tagen werde ich die Gebiete besetzen. You have come too late. I shall occupy the territories in two days' time. What? Then why have me make the journey? I must say, Mr. Chancellor, that you appear to have no intention whatsoever of securing peace. Was hat er gesagt? Er sagt, warum sind wir hergekommen? Ich muss sagen, Herr Reichskanzler, Sie haben offenbar überhaupt keine Absicht, den Frieden zu sichern. Sagen Sie, Herrn Chamberlain, was das bedeutet. We are informed that Dr. Benish's government has just ordered a general mobilization.
Jacques isn't down yet. He was working late last night. Every time we meet alone, our first words are always about our husband. Sit down. There are two letters for you. Oh, thank you, Annette. You, uh, seen the paper? Not yet. I haven't had the heart to look at it. Hmm? The news at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> What's the joke? It's from Boris. The questionnaire on why I haven't written to him. He says, uh, please delete where inappropriate. One, I am well, not well. Two, the reason for my silence is pardonable, unpardonable, ill will, lunacy, perversity, sheer bloody laziness. <laughs> I will write you a long letter in dash days from now. <laughs> Fill in dash. Where is he now? He'll be a with Lola. So, they're still together. They never really parted. He's rather young, isn't he? Does that matter? I suppose not. Are you a group two man? Yes. But I shan't be leaving immediately. This other letter's from Gomez. He's coming here to see me on Sunday. Sunday? Hmm. He doesn't give his address. I can't get in touch. But won't you get into trouble? I have to report to barracks in Nancy. It's quite a journey. I doubt if they'll fuss over a slight delay. Only 48 hours left, then? Yes. Yeah. Tomorrow? Yes, darling. Is he going back to Spain? Not immediately. He's going to spend the last day of his leave with your Uncle Mature. I wrote to him, Sarah. I like to know what he's up to. I can't let him down. Of course not. Bang, 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 I'm going to kill them all. <laughs> kill who, eh? Fascists, like you do, Dad. Good boy! Kill the lot! Look, you've forgotten that one. Over there. Bang, 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 bang. <laughs> Gomez, how could you? Oh, what? Bringing him that as a present. Our son must learn to fight, else he become a coward like the French. I don't see that people should be called cowards because they don't want to fight. There are times when one has to fight. You were a pacifist when we first met. Well, that was the right time to be a pacifist. Well, the ends have not changed. The means for attaining them is different, that is all. Bang, 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 bang! Take that, you dirty French coward, you! Stop him! <laughs> oh, Pablo, don't attack the French. They're not fascists. No, but they're yellow through and through, so they've got to be killed. Oh! Oh, my poor dear brother. Adet's just told me. Well, shan't be going today, you know. No, I know. Won't you get into trouble? Oh, a few hours shouldn't make any difference. Well, my dear chap, what can I possibly say to you? I'm with other wars. You could always say to a fellow, you're going off to fight for your children, your liberty, your property. You're going to defend France. But with this one... You, uh, you don't answer. Yes, I can understand it. You feel trapped. You feel desperate. Not at all. Not? Now, don't tell me you're resigned to going off like some sheep to the slaughter. I've been called up some guy. <laughs> yes, but is it a war worth fighting? That, to me, is secondary importance. <laughs> My dear Mathieu, you stagger me. You really do. No, I... Where's the turbulent, sarcastic, cynical brother I had, hmm? The man who'd never allow himself to be fooled. Yes, well, I'm... I can't form any firm conclusions on this Czechoslovakian issue. It's outside my province, so I'm uh, really doing what everybody else does. Well, I'll tell you about this Czechoslovakian issue. The situation's absolutely clear. Benesch, their president, was pledged to establish Czechoslovakia as a federation of states on the Swiss model. That was agreed at the peace conference. But oh no, not Benesch. No, he has placed the Sudeten Germans under Czech administration, Czech laws, Czech police. The Germans, under Hitler, want to protect their brothers, and rightly so. And now France proposes. <laughs> France! The land of liberty intends that it should shed her blood so that Czech officials might go on tormenting its German population. And to see you going along with this crass, illiberal stupidity makes me extremely hot under the collar. No, oh, come off it, Jacques. Mm. Isn't their own administration the Sudetens one now? It's union with Germany. Oh, Mathieu, don't talk like my concierge and call them Sudetens, please. The Sudetans are mountains. Say Sudeten Germans, if you like, or simply Germans. I mean, they are Germans who've been goaded beyond endurance and want to join their fatherland. What's wrong in that?
To think that my brother, a university scholar, should so abandon the most elementary principles of human conduct to say he's going off to the slaughter because he cannot do otherwise. No, that I really cannot endure. If there are many like you, my dear fellow, it's all up with France, I'm telling you. What would you like me to do then? What? I said... We're what? still a democracy, I hope. I imagine there is still such a thing in France as public opinion. Well? Well, if millions of Frenchmen, instead of futile quarrels, had closed their ranks and said to the government, so, the Sudeten Germans want to return to the bosom of their own people, do they? Then let them, it's their own affair. Yeah, the politicians would have piped down soon enough, I'll tell you. Oh, Mathieu. I know you're prejudiced against Hitler, but I do think, as a reasonable man, you might try to look at the other side of the coin. It's a young and energetic regime. Not our culture, admittedly. But it exercises an undeniable attraction on the nations of Central Europe. Aren't we wrong in interfering with a whole way of life simply because it doesn't happen to be ours? Well, you're entitled to your opinion. Jacques thinks I ought to be more upset about being called up. He's telling me I'm going to get killed for nothing. Well, it's pure lunacy. Worst case of suicide in history. Whatever happens, we can't win. France will lose three or four million men and become a second-class power. That'll be the result of this war. Well, let's only hope Neville Chamberlain might bring our government to its senses. Chamberlain? Do you really think the English will stand by us in this madness? Do you think the English will allow Czechoslovakia to continue as it is? With his army of one and a half million, its modern arms industry and nine nationalities at each other's throats? <laughs> Could there be a bigger time bomb? The English aren't stupid. My first duty, now that I am back, is to report to the French and British governments on the results of my mission. But until I have done so, it would be difficult for me to say any more. Just to think, this fat old cow beside me is my wife. Well, I wanted a high-powered catastrophe and I certainly got it. And what's worse, she adores me. Do you really think there's going to be a war? Oh, God, if only a war would come. How I should wallow in that sea of hatred. Do you, Danielle? A war? No, no, I don't. <laughs> if only I could believe you. Good afternoon, Emil. Sit down. Oh, to have my hands on his thighs while he digs. And then to slide them slowly upwards, feeling the ripples of those dorsal muscles. To bathe my fingertips in the moist shadows of his armpits. I don't think you're right, you know. Mobilization's already begun. Why doesn't she clear off and take her afternoon nap? My dear Marcel, appearances can be deceptive, above all in politics. Oh? We shall mobilize 200,000 men. Hitler will send rolling four armored divisions. After which the statesmen, having satisfied their consciences, will have a quiet little talk round the table. I 
see. If only it had got something to compensate for that lack of brain. But female flesh makes me puke. Women's bodies are like rubber and bone meat. You always get more than enough to fill your hands. Ah, there's a body, if you like. It cries out for the touch of a sculptor. A sinewy back, a tight little rump. Stop it, I'm reformed. I mustn't drift into that again. Oh, but Christ, how can I go on living with this great hulk of nauseating femininity? War. That's the answer. War. Let it turn all bodies, em and f, into wrecked, bleeding, dismembered pieces of meat. Better that than be haunted forever by this eternal round of furtive desires. But surely... What was that, my dear? Surely Germany is geared to war. And there's scarcely anything more we can do to satisfy Hitler. Well, then I... We shall satisfy Hitler to our utmost, my dear. Then Hitler will withdraw. Hitler will appear to be most benign and magnanimous, my darling. You think so? I do. A young god. Oh, stow it, for Christ's sake. You're an old queen. That's you. Every time you see a young boy half naked in the sunshine, you say, a young god. Stale thoughts, you old fairy, you. War won't change a thing for you, will it? You'll haunt the railway stations, luring young soldiers to your flat for the night. And however smelly and pimply they are, your practiced lips will murmur automatically, a young god. A man accompanies himself forever. Come. You mustn't worry about things. You're missing your siesta. The doctor said that you need a lot of rest. I feel so ashamed. I seem to spend all day in my bedroom. Yes, thank God. Oh. I bet you haven't written to your mother. Oh, that's mm. true. Oh, I'm a bad girl. Well, I'll do it before I go to sleep. No, you go and rest. I'll write to her myself. Oh, mm. Daniel. A letter from the son in law. She'll be so proud. I married her because I thought I might come face to face with the real horror of myself. Here's the result. I lay in a garden, sipping brandy, enjoying all the old desires. If anybody knew about me, they'd loathe me. A pervert with a wretched, twisted mind. But when I try to hate myself, it all becomes indulgent, woolly, insubstantial. Only through others can I recognize the filth and horror within me. I want the whole world to hate me. Perhaps then, I might feel that I exist. Do you want something, monsieur? What were you digging? I was burying a dead dog, monsieur. It's getting a little hot out here. I think I shall go and rest. up your troubles then go on his way sing him toodle-loom-a-loom-a toodle-lay toodle-loom-a-loom-a toodle-lay and the umbrellas to men today gentlemen i have heard your arguments but i still refuse to mobilize if we did the gesture might provoke Hitler into an immediate air attack upon London. If you cannot conceive of that horror, I can. He sees me. 
he sees me, that is it. At long last, I am myself. I exist in his look. He searches me to the depths. He knows me for what I am. Coward, hypocrite, pederast. For all eternity, I am not alone. Here I am then. Here I am as you see me. I do not know myself, but you know me. I cannot support myself, but you support me. Your look eternally recreates me. Hated, despised, yet sustained. Transmuted into myself. Your presence will have me continue thus forever. I am infinite and infinitely guilty. I am before God and before men. I am. Ecce homo. I'm sorry, dear, I can't stand it. Don't you care that millions of men are going to be killed? Well, answer me. We all die. We are dying from the day we are born. Mm. With all respect, that's intellectual claptrap, my dear wife. Thank you. I'm asking my brother, who has a degree in philosophy. What is it all about? You want an answer? Oh, please. Well, we can, if you like, play an intellectual game, or we can accept that the question is futile. Mm? We're on a futile journey towards the grave. Ah, then why are we here? Well? For nothing? Etchy, homo. We should never get to the station. Oh, look at that. They're all clearing out. Good. We'll have the hotel all to ourselves. We'll be able to change our room. <laughs> Two panel, please. You know there are only ten people in the casino last night. Ten? I made them all sit at the centre tables and walked around and whispered my songs in their ears. Now, why do they do a bunk? Really, they'd be better off here. They might get home and find their house has been bombed. At least they'd be at home. What? You don't understand that? Well, frankly, no. After a certain age, people like to make trouble at home. <laughs> what are you laughing at? But you! <laughs> well, you are a scream, Lola. There you sit, talking about how middle-aged people feel, and you don't know anything about it. You've never had a home. No. You've been very nice to me. Are you complaining? No. Why are you doing it? Perhaps I'm growing up. I intend to study you. Do you? Mm. Well, you know the saying, study one woman only and study her well and you'll know the whole race of women. Perhaps you'll find out too much. Don't you worry about that. <laughs> A thoroughly sound technique. I approve. Well, a method's essential, otherwise everything's woolly. I'm so glad I came. Here I am then, God. Here I am as you made me. An irredeemable, dirty-minded old pervert. Right, you've put me here. 
now sustain me. I'm as queer as a coot forever and ever, amen. Why have you done it to me? Ah, 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 ah. God's purpose must not be questioned. You did it, not me. You'd like me to serve the everlasting as an old queen? Don't worry, it'll be done. What's more? You must love yourself in me, O oh thou who has created monsters. Do you know something, God? I feel remarkably calm and sanctified. <laughs> Hello there. Oh! <laughs> well, Colonel, how goes it? General. What? You are talking to a general. I don't believe it. Promotion's very rapid in your army, isn't it? Yes, yeah, shortage of officers. You are looking well, too. Mm, my luxury tan, lazing on the beach. <laughs> well, where shall we go? Oh, little restaurant, I think. Uh, we could go back to where I'm staying. Your brother and his wives. Uh, it's not all that amusing. Well, let's go to a place where there's music and women. Mm -hmm. I just spend a week with my family. <laughs> well, we'll go to the Provence. <laughs> there's a message from the Czechs. Well, I'll read it then. My government has now studied the document and the map. It is a de facto ultimatum, such as commonly presented to a conquered nation and not a proposal to a sovereign state which has shown every readiness to make sacrifices for the sake of European peace. Monsieur Hitler's government has shown not the faintest trace of a similar disposition. My government is astonished by the contents of the memorandum. The proposals go far beyond what we agreed to in the so-called Anglo-French plan. They deprive us of all safeguards for our national existence. We are to allow the German armies to penetrate deeply into our territory. Not only must we deliver intact our carefully prepared fortifications to the Germans, but those of my people who do not wish to live under the German regime are told they must leave home without the right to take their personal possessions with them. A peasant family is not even allowed to take with them their cow. My government wishes to declare with all possible solemnity that Monsieur Hitler's demands under their present form are absolutely and unconditionally unacceptable to my government. Against these new and cruel demands, my government feels constrained to offer a supreme resistance and with the help of God will do so. The nation of St. Wenceslas, of Jan Hus, Thomas Masaryk, will not be a nation of slaves. We rely upon the two great Western democracies whose wishes we have followed against our better judgment to stand with us in our hour of trial. Is that all? That is all. More trouble. Deladier and Bonnie will be here in an hour's time. I find this document inopportune, to say the least. Written perhaps to impress the French when they arrive. Cows? What's all this about cows? It's so very uncalled for. Personally, I was rather moved by it. Moved? My dear fellow, we are conducting a negotiation. We must not allow our hearts to go to our heads, or we'll lose the game. And uh, what about Marcel? Sarah told me he's all over between you. Finished. She married Danielle. Oh, strange choice. Still. Gives you your uh, freedom, doesn't it? Freedom for one. Oh, Marcel wasn't your type. Ah. Oh. Oh. There's your music. Mm, sorry, here. <laughs> what about the women? Oh. <clears throat> when I was here last week, you couldn't budge for, for a skirt. A lot has happened since last week. Mm. I think people are beginning to understand what's happening. Oh, the French understand nothing, the Spaniard understand. So does a Czech, even a German, because they're in it. The French aren't. They understand nothing. They are afraid. That is all. Uh, when, when people's minds have been geared to peace, it's very difficult to change over to war. I did it like that. Do you think I didn't enjoy the peaceful existence of being a painter? You're different. Oh, you talk as my wife. <laughs> Thank you.
Yeah, it's stupid, but um, I had a feeling you were going to turn up in uniform. Uniform? Mm. <laughs> Would you like to see me in uniform? Uh huh. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's very imperious. Oh, I have to be. <laughs> yes, it, it is a farce. A couple of days from now, I'll be in uniform. I doubt if I look as fierce as you, though. You an officer? No, private. <gasps> all Frenchmen are privates. Mm. And all Spaniards are generals. <laughs> <laughs> Look at that. Mars and Venus. Oh, a bit more your style. She's a bit young, though. Fifteen. What? War matures them. Uh, here's me in action. Oh, I'm, I'm, no, I'm fighting. Oh. Where was that taken? Madrid, the university. The fighting's still going on. She's kept by a rich industrialist from Lyon. Oh. You've nothing to lose but your chain. None but the brave deserves the fair. He deserves her. He's fought. Behind him lie burning villages, scorched earth, the cracking of rifles, the bursting of mortars. Blood and sand. I've never had the fair. I've never slept with one of these healthy, radiant, sensual women, fit only for warriors. My women have always been the odd, the rejects. In fact, I wouldn't even dare approach the fair. I know I don't deserve them. I'm not the brave. Evening. Evening. And not many people in tonight. I usually keep open till All Saints, but if this goes on, I shall close down the 1st of October. When will you open again? If war comes, I reckon I shall stay shut. What will you drink? The usual? Yes. 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. Eh? Oh, your contract expires at the end of the month. It means we've got five more days here. What of it? I'm just beginning to get a taste for the finite. Oh, she. Yeah. No, it's nice to know when things are going to end. It, it helps you to appreciate them all the more. What are you hinting at? Hint? All your kindness to me lately. What's behind it? No, I'm not with you. You're not just giving me a good time before you leave me, are you? Now, where do you get that idea well, from? Well, all this talk about things coming to an end. Oh. Well, that's just my new philosophical posture. Oh. You see, we tend to think that everything is infinitely renewable. Well, like cigarettes. I can take this cigarette, I can light it and smoke it without ever feeling the intensity of the experience. Because I know that a little later I shall be smoking another, but that's the wrong attitude, Lola. Everything carries the tag of finality. This is my lecture for the evening. <laughs> Sorry. No, go on, I love it when you're clever. Well, now you're really putting me off. No, please, what were you saying about uh, the intensity of experience? Phrase is magic. All right. I'll make you laugh. Now, this morning, in, uh, in pursuit of my present philosophical posture, I made a few calculations. Now, assuming that I die in 1942... Hey? Oh, yes, give or take six months, that's when I'll die. You don't say. Well, Lola, if I continue my postgraduate studies to doctorate level, that'll mean 1940 before I enter the army. And we add to that six months training, six months fighting, Yes, I should say early 1942 would be a fair estimate. You're not going to die over my Over your dead body, <laughs> you are a scream, Lola. Supposing, supposing that I enter the army next year. Next year, but you Yes, said... I know, but let's just say it's next year. Yes, but why next year? Well, Lola, if, if thousands of men are being killed while I'm just lazing about the Sorbonne, then the philosophy will have to be readjusted. You do shift your ground, don't you? That's philosophy. 
Well, very well. Assuming that I go into a bar twice a day, that's two times 365, that's 730 grogs in front of me. The paucity of grogs that lies ahead really shocks me. And how about the other thing? Oh, the other thing. Yes, I thought we'd get to that. All right, so suppose we average out at three times a week. Mm. Well, all right, 3.5 then. So that's 3.5 times 2 times uh, 52, which is uh, 7 times 52. That's 354 times. 364. Well, it's still not a lot. No. So the answer's intensity. Of experience. Yes. Mm. You know you're a wonderful lover. Am I? Do you question it? Well, you've had other men. I've only had you. Would you like to have other women? No. No, in my philosophy, when time's short, only the fool goes in for diversity. The, uh, the wise man goes in for mm, intensity yeah, of experience. experience. Yes. <laughs> Would you like to see the rest of my calculations? Mm -hmm. Women? One. That's it. The French government has undertaken certain commitments towards Czechoslovakia. If the Czech government maintains its uh, refusal of the German proposals, and if in consequence of that refusal it becomes the victim of aggression, the French government will regard itself as under an obligation to fulfill its commitments. Yes. Yes, obviously. What, in that eventuality, would be the position of the British government? Why are you smiling? It's charming. If you like it, you can come here as often as you wish. I am leaving, my dear, tomorrow. Leaving? Where are you going? To Spain. But there's a war. I am a soldier. On leave. Which side? Which side would you prefer? Franco's side. Do I look it? A single night. Not much, is it? And for once I found a man I could really fall for. I come back when Franco has won the war. I won't be long. I expect he's planning his next campaign.
Oh, there we are, all ready for the off. Hmm? Ah, there he is. What are you doing? Trying to pick up Germany. What? Well, Hitler's speaking tonight. Yes, I reckon it's a bad earth, don't you? Ah, uh, could be. Mm, they rot away. <laughs> what, though? Hmm? Those things you stick in the ground. Look, uh, the train doesn't go for another half an hour. I'd like to get it fixed. Ah. Shove this in the ground instead. <laughs> Brainwave, eh? I won't be long. Pat? Yes. Ah, oh, I've written to Ivich. Uh, I wonder yes. would... Yes. I'll get the girl to post it for you. Thanks. I've put in two wings of chicken and a little of that pate, which I know you like. And there are some ham sandwiches. I filled the thermos with wine. I thought you might like some when you get there. Thank you, Dan. Put your finger there, will you? Would you like some hard-boiled eggs? No. No, thank you. There. That's done. Um, you want to see me off at the station? I think not. I'm sure Jacques would rather be alone with you for the last few minutes. Will you write to me? I'm afraid not. I'll send you parcels instead. I'd like you to write to me. Well, sometimes you might find a little note between the cigarettes and the soap. Oh. I'll say goodbye now. Goodbye. Dan. Ah, now we're getting somewhere. Get a fine adjusting, and we'll be there. Said your farewells to Odette. Well, we'd better get you on your way then. to freedom continues next on BBC4. Mm. 